Once again, it's on. Hey, it's just truly Lorenzo Ice T. Thomas of the Sports Brothers. And it's now time to talk, of course, some Miami Dolphins football. Well, this is the first time we've had an opportunity to talk to you since uh, we uh, put out our Trust the Process video not too long ago. And I want to thank you, everyone who has su subscribed to the YouTube channel and liked the video. And right now, I need you to do the same thing. Please subscribe to this channel because uh, if you're familiar with the, so with the Sports Brothers, you know what we do throughout the season. We we are uh, we're on the field doing pre-game and post-game reports, and hopefully we'll be able to do that again this year. Uh, the NFL has cut down, and the Dolphins have cut down a, a, a little bit on the amount of reporters that will be allowed, and of course in the locker room and on the field because of COVID-19. But uh, we'll still have some behind-the-scenes footage of what's happening with your Miami Dolphins and my Miami Dolphins, of course, as you can tell. You know, so a big shout going out to Jeff Fox. He will also be out and about bringing you to bringing you all the details that you need to know about our Miami Dolphins. Well, yesterday was uh, the first day in pads for the Miami Dolphins and the fans are uh, really concerned. But something interesting happened when training camp started. The offense was looking good. And the whole time I was hearing, you know, two was throwing these big bombs to Albert Wilson. And uh, he was just picking apart the defense. And I'm like, okay, that's good to hear. But if he's picking apart the defense, the defense must not be looking too good. You know, without Xavier out there playing at the opposite corner of Byron Jones, what is this defense looking like? So, of course, those first few days, the offense was flying around. And then what happened? The pads came on and the defense showed up. And you can see what McKinley and Butler, those additions are going to add to that interior part of the defense. And they basically, you know, had their way with the Miami Dolphins offense yesterday in the first day of, um, of uh, basically training camp with the pads on. But as you know, at this point, the defense is always going to be ahead of the offense. But I think the, I think the defense really got a little tired of all the press that the offense was getting, and they put the clap down on the offense yesterday. So today is day two of, uh, the, uh, for the, you know, uh, of training camp, but day two of having pads on. And earlier this morning, Coach Brian Flores had a press conference, and he was asked a few questions about, of course, pads being on and the progression of uh, training camp. So one of the first questions that he was asked this morning is, what do you hope to achieve in terms of the skills that you wanted to add with all of the players that you have basically added to the linebacker position? And this is what Brian Flores had to say. Yeah, we made a couple additions to the linebacker room. Uh, Duke Riley, McKinney. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we like the group. Uh, they work hard. They're tough. They're smart. They're competitive. Um, you know, it's important to them, um, you know, they, you know, over, you know, it's, it's early. So over the first few days of, uh, training camp and I should, you know, I shouldn't say that going back to the spring and OTAs, um, it's a group that works well together or they're trying to work well together and, um, they've all got a different skill set that we can potentially use, whether it's. Pass game, pass rush, run defense, kicking game. Uh, so, uh, again, very competitive uh, room. Uh, you know, the new guys plus Bake, plus Roberts, plus Munson, plus Egavon. Um, I mean, I think it's a competitive group. And um, you know, if we continue to just build and, and take it one day at a time and try to improve every day, we'll uh, hopefully um, – have a, have a solid group. The linebacker core and the defensive line looked really good. The defense overall looked great yesterday. One of the next questions was about Jakeem Grant. Now, we all know that he is a Pro Bowl kick returner, but one of the questions was, how does Brian Flores balance the ability of the player in an area where he knows where he may use him going forward? You know, I mean, he's a great kick returner, but, you know, how has he advanced as wide receiver? I think there's a lot of uh, value in um, having a re an explosive returner who can flip the field and, and flip field position and score. I mean, I think there's a lot of, I think we all see the value in that. So, um, and, you know, Jakeem, obviously very explosive, obviously uh, productive, um, not only as a returner, but, you know, as a receiver as well. Um, and, you know, 
we're, we're happy to have him. So, uh, you know, we'll keep working. Obviously, there's a lot of competition in that room. Uh, again, last year was last year. I mean, I think we've said that, you know, multiple times. And I think, you know, while we, we you know, we use that as, as uh, you know, I would say a barometer for what we know he can do, um, every day we got to prove it. You know, and that's that's kind of what we tell the players, and they know that, and they they understand that. So we got to prove it every day, in meetings and walk through and practice. Um, and if you you know put all those things together, you know, we uh, we feel like you'll have success in, in in games. But right now we're just focused on today. It's going to be interesting to see who makes the final roster at wide receiver. It is a good it is a good core. Now, Coach Flores was also asked about what has he seen as far as the, as the improvement is with two or tug of a lowest deep ball. I think he's uh, it's something he's 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 placed an emphasis on. Uh, we've placed an emphasis on pushing not pushing the ball downfield, but um, you know taking advantage of those opportunities if they're there. Um, but, you know, like always, we want to, you know, have good fundamentals, good techniques, good mechanics, go through his progression. Um, and if it's there and it's open, uh, or we can throw him open and take a shot. I mean, we're not going to make him if we don't throw him. So I think he's uh, taking more uh, taking more shots downfield. And I think, you know, as a, as a, you know, hopefully he's gaining more confidence that we can make some of those throws. Uh, but at the same time, you know, not every not every throw is going to be a 50 yard or 60 yarder. So, um, got to make good decisions. Uh, got to check it down when we need to check it down. Got to throw the intermediate route when we need to throw the intermediate route. Got to throw it away and take the incompletion when we need to do that. Um, and, you know, he just needs reps. Uh, so we'll just try to give him more as many reps as possible. That's the same with all the quarterbacks, Jacoby, Reed, and really all players at all position. But, you know, specific to Tua and the and the downfield throws, that's. That'd be my, my take on it. And yes, throughout camp, we have heard that Tua Tugavaloa has made strides and he's ready uh, to take that next step, step going into year two. His teammates have complimented him a great deal. You've seen zip on the ball and uh, he, his, he's always had pocket presence and has been accurate. So we'll just have to see, have to see how things go moving forward. Now, earlier the other day, Coach Flores said that things were moving in the right direction with Xavier and Howard. He was asked, how are things today? And here's how he responded. Moving in the right direction. <laughs> there you have it. Vintage, <laughs> vintage Coach Flores. That's all you're going to get for him, all right? But he was also asked, of course, yesterday was day one for the uh, for the team, putting on the pads, and what was it like out there in the trenches? Did the boys go at it today in the heat? Uh, day one in pads is, you know, every, again, every, every year is to kind of the same conversation, pad level, technique, fundamentals, footwork, hand placement. It's the first time you, you've done it in a long time. Um, Everyone's a little bit rusty, and that's what we're talking about. Footwork, hand placement, pad level. So that can always be better. We can always play lower. Um, we talk a lot about leverage and you know, you know, how you win against an opponent. Um, and you know, we make those corrections, and we come back out here today and get a little bit better. We come back out on tomorrow to Friday, and get a little bit better and then just try to make those improvements on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, you know, then we get into preseason games and we do it for real. Next up, Coach Flores was asked, with all the attention that has been put forth on the offensive line once the pads went on, what improvement were you looking for in the running game as well as stopping the run? I think you always want to uh, – I mean, we want to improve in a lot of areas, obviously – in every area. Um, but yeah, run defense is important. I mean, so I think that's that's always a kind of standard, hey, we want to be good against the run, force it to be one dimensional and, and play defense that way. So um, I think, you know, every defense, you know, high school, college, you know, pros is, is saying the same thing from that standpoint. So yeah, there's this, you know, importance placed there. And um, 
you know, we're working on that. We worked on that yesterday. Uh, conversely, you know, it's important that we run the ball, so we're going to, you know, spend time on that uh, offensively, run defense defensively, and, uh, you know, again, hopefully, like, like everything else, just try to get a little bit better every day. Well, based on what we saw with day one of practice with the pads on, the defense is just definitely way ahead of the offense. And some of those changes and acquisitions that the Dolphins have done in the offseason should definitely help this defense stop the run because, you know, we, we know we were having problems stopping the run last year, and we had a great deal of problems running the ball. If we're able to do one of those th either one of those things, that will definitely help Tua Tugavaloa on the offensive side of the ball. So also, uh, Coach Flores was asked with uh, Austin Jackson. Of course, he's um, very involved in uh, social media. He's very involved with some things that have happened with his sister. And, uh, you know, he was asked, how important is it for players to use their status or their platform like Austin Jackson has to help people that are in need? Yeah, I mean, they're NFL players. You know, he's got a platform to, to, to speak to you guys and you know reach all the, the the Miami Dolphins fans and football fans who watch so um, I think it's great that he's that he's doing that and um, you know, he has my full support to do it and that's what's up of course the players do have the support of their coach and I'm Lorenzo Ice-T Thomas of the Sports Brothers and that does it for this edition and of course we'll have another show coming up very soon and we will keep you abreast with all the things that are going on with the Miami Dolphins so make sure you keep it right here please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, okay? It's the Sports Brothers for Jeff Fox. I'm Lorenzo Ice-T Thomas. Until next time, peace and be wise. I'm gone. See you in a map.